We assess passive range of motion whenever there's a difference in active range of motion. And with passive range of motion, we're trying to work out whether the deficit in range is due to stiffness due to arthritis, stiffness due to joint contracture, or stiffness due to muscle spasm from pain inhibition. We first stabilize the scapula with a hand over the shoulder, and this reassures the patient and allows you to feel for crepitus and for muscle spasm. For forward flexion, we bring the arm forward passively up to 90 degrees. We want to feel when scapular movement is initiated. In a normal patient, scapular movement should be initiated at 90 degrees, and if it initiates earlier, there's a sign of stiffness. We repeat this with abduction, which again should go up to 90 degrees before initiating scapular movement. To assess external rotation, passive movement, we stand behind the patient, we tuck their elbows close in, and we rotate the arms out, and we look for a difference in range of motion. The affected side should have less range of motion. To assess internal rotation passively, we again stabilize the scapula to reassure the patient. If they can, we bring the arm out to 90 degrees of abduction with the elbow bent, and we can assess internal rotation by turning the arm down, and we can compare this to the other side. If you feel crepitus when testing passive range of motion, then this suggests osteoarthritis. If you feel muscle spasm, then this suggests pain inhibition. And if you feel neither crepitus nor muscle spasm, it gives an indication that contracture from conditions such as adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder may be the problem. <laughs>